organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on this morning live edition of Daily Iowan TV, a student vigil for the University of Northern Iowa student who passed away this weekend. And new changes by the University of Iowa student government all coming up next. Iowa Volleyball is having a tremendous non-conference part of their season. And the Iowa football team had much to say at availability. We have more coming up in sports. Good morning and thanks for tuning in. I'm Bradley Martin. The University of Northern Iowa organized a night vigil in honor of former student Nathan Tweed who was found dead in the Iowa River near the Benton Street Bridge on Saturday evening. Family, friends and classmates gathered around as the director of campus ministry at the Wesley Foundation read poems, offered words of comfort to those that attended. The cause of death is still being investigated and the funeral service will be held on Friday at 11 a.m. College debt is a major concern of many college students, but student debt won't be as much as some think. At the 2016 Iowa State Fair, the Iowa College Aid conducted a survey about student loan debt and found out that people overestimate how much loan debt they have to pay off. The survey shows that students are actually borrowing more loans than needed. As of 2015, the average amount of debt after four years at the University of Iowa was around $27,000. According to Sarah Even, the Associate Director at the UI Office of Financial Aid, generally students are able to repay their loans due to, default, due to low default ratings in Iowa. As a result of another competitive year of UISG senator selection, 14 senators are nominated out of the 88 that applied this year. Our reporter Daisy Lee had the opportunity to speak with some of the UISG new senators. Here's that story. University of Iowa student government reserves five freshman senator positions and fills the rest of the open seats in the Senate. So a total of 14 seats are filled this academic year and they are ready to make improvements on campus. One of the major improvements HERO would like to see is the better outreach for victims of sexual violence. Last year I noticed that success at Iowa needed to be improved. Um, the representation of the different issues in relation to the sexual assault UISG, I think it's the best vehicle for change on campus. Eric fully involves in politics and was a part of state legislature since the student government as a platform to pass great ideas and help students. Just making sure, for instance, our campus is more sustainable. For instance, people can speak their, speak their mind and um, voice their opinions here on campus and make sure everybody's represented equally. And the goal of fulfilling the block party platform, UISG is working on the multiple projects at this moment. Um, we're working on composting routes, uh, bringing those back to campus through our sustainability committee. We just recently secured the CAN bus stop. We're doing a lot of outreach um, with President Harold to talk to our students who use the cultural centers to determine the future of those. We're constantly working on all of them, hoping to get them done by the end of our term. Reporting from Iowa City, Old Capitol Mall, Daisy Daily Iowa TV. The season of layering is upon us. I, I was walking in this morning in shorts and it was a bit frigid. Zhao Li, tell us more. Is it here to stay? I don't know. That's right, Bradley. The temperatures are really beginning to cool off. I guess the taste of fall is really coming our way. For a weather forecast today, we'll see a mostly clear sky with a temperature of 74 degrees. Heading into the night, temperature will drop to 59 degrees with cloudy skies. And next morning, we'll see those partly cloudy skies again with a temperature of 78 degrees. Now taking a look at our six days extended forecast. Thursday we'll see those cloudy skies but with a high of 70, 78 degrees. Friday there's an 80% chance of thunderstorms and we'll see a high of 78 degrees. 
Saturday we'll be seeing very similar conditions for the football game in Koenig Stadium. And great news is that Sunday and next Monday we'll see the clear skies again and with temps stay in the low 70s. Well, today's weather is probably not perfect for beautiful sceneries, but yesterday's afternoon was actually pretty nice out. I took a look at a local orchard, a popular hotspot during the fall season. As a part nature park and part orchard, Wilson's has a variety of more than 140 different kinds of apples. You'll find the big ones, small ones, green ones, yellow ones, and of course, the red ones here, each with its own flavor and texture. And there's one thing they share in common, the great taste. Right now we have two varieties, the Honey Crisp and the Song of September, that are especially popular. Retail manager Barb said they're especially busy during weekends, and the students is one of the major group visitors here. I love the apples here, yeah. Um, What's your favorite kind of apple? My favorite kind is probably the Honey Crisp. Emily also said she's glad to spend the time with her friends. The orchard is not just a place for you to pick up your apples. It's also a perfect place for family and friends to hang out and relax. And for many families, visiting the orchard has already become a fall tradition. It's a good experience. Hi, buddy. It's a good experience, and he loves to run around and pick out the apples. We're having some good family time right now, so this is really nice. The orchard is selling everything from the apple and apple-made products to the apple scented soap. Make sure to check out some time. Hey. Reporting in Wilson's Orchard in Iowa City, Jolly, Day Iowan TV. Class just got more exciting, especially for those with classes at the Robert A. Lee Recreational Center in Iowa City, which holds a new edible classroom. It's said to have garden beds, fruit trees, and other elements designed to help people connect with foods they eat. The classroom officially is going to open at the ribbon cutting ceremony at 10 a.m. on Saturday. The public is welcome to try out the herbs, fruits, and vegetables that they're currently growing. And of course, anyone is welcome to reserve the space for a class or event. The University of Iowa Muslim Association is giving students a chance to celebrate e Alada, a Muslim holiday that started on Sunday. MSA will be hosting a dinner tonight in the IMU's main lounge. For many students who cannot celebrate the holiday with family, the dinner will serve as an important time for the Muslim community and allow students to connect during the holiday. We have a lot going on on today's Daily Iowan TV Sports Edition. I hear there's some rock climbing. Zach and Olivia, tell us more. That's right, Bradley. Iowa football, volleyball, and one sport that has one of our reporters climbing up a wall. Well, we, we start with football, though. While Iowa's third football game of the season is quickly approaching, everyone is looking to the defense to see if they can have the same impressive performance as last weekend. But with such a big improvement from game one to two, where did that improvement come from? Katie Sextro takes a closer look. There was quite a difference in Iowa's first two games of the season. After witnessing a struggling defense that gave up 21 points to Miami of Ohio, they allowed Iowa State to score only a field goal the week after. There was a lot of things we, uh, we improved and cleaned up from week one to week two, which should be, should be expected and it's something we need to continue to do um, from week to week uh, so we can get where we want to be as a defense. So what changed with this Iowa defense? Uh, we were kind of stepping sideways as D-linemen and as D-linemen you want to step forward and get kind of knockbacks, hit them in the mouth and our communication was better from week one to week two. Just echoing the calls down the line, uh, was, we just did a lot better with that, getting kind of used to our uh, crowd too. Every week we're just trying to improve, uh, make corrections off the tape from the games and practice. And you know, uh, I think just we made strides in, in practice that week. Um, yeah, we just came, we came ready to play. I think it's just game by game. Um, you know, you come in with more experience. Everybody gets that first game out of their system, um, and understands you know how to play with what kind of effort, uh, well, mostly 100% effort all the time, but uh, just kind of, you know, how, how hard to go, how, you know, how much to give on each play and stuff like that. And what are they working on now? So they see improvements like this every week. Uh, just small detail things, um, just like any other week, you know, especially from the first to second week, you want to work on your details, um, but you want to keep on honing that edge, um, you know, throughout the year, and hopefully we can just get better detail oriented. We work well together, so, you know, you know when things don't go well, you know, we always know just, Go back to fundamentals, you know, as a unit and just work on that. And with both Iowa and North Dakota State coming in undefeated, it'll definitely be a good test of these teams' abilities. 
Reporting from the practice facility, Katie Sextro, Daily Iowan TV Sports. We will have more about what the Hawks are doing specifically to prepare for North Dakota State on our pregame show Friday. The Iowa women's volleyball team is now 8-2, moving into a tournament in their home court this weekend, and they also are getting ready to start Big Ten play. Mary Kate Haran has more on the team's preparation for their upcoming opponents. This past weekend, the Iowa women's volleyball team was in Ames for the Iowa State Classic. The first game did not end up the way they wanted it to. They ended up losing to Iowa State, but they only took a positive out of that and ended up 2-1 and one in the tournament, beating Montana and North Dakota State. Once again, Reagan Coyle and Jess Janata were named to the all-tournament team. Now, they are just working on keeping that momentum going into the Iowa Invitational that they have this weekend and also starting Big Ten play a week from Friday. Our group did a pretty good job of rebounding um, after a tough fought loss on uh, Friday night. And I think when you invest that much emotionally into a match, it's easy to get up the next morning and just feel flat. But our group did a great job and uh, to clean up the next two matches, 3-0, 3-0, and come back with an 8-2 record is a pretty good start for us. You know, right now we're just um, we're working on watching our film and everything and working on that first contact battle, so passing and serving. And I think that once we get all of that stuff down, it's going to come together. I think this weekend we're really trying to build some confidence going into Big Ten play. Um, we have some pretty good teams coming in, and I think you know this will be a good opportunity for us to really perfect what we're doing um, and kind of solidify you know a lineup um, and as well as you know um, be able to feel good about what we're doing individually and as a whole. And I think that's really important for us this weekend. Once again, Big Ten, every team is physical, every team is talented, and, and you just have the best of the best every night. And so that will allow us to really rise to that opportunity and challenge. And um, in order to prepare for that, it means that we have to be at our greatest and our best in practice scenarios. So uh, every day counts for us in the gym and we want to maximize that time. From Carver Hawkeye Arena, this has been Mary Kate Herrian, Daily Iowan TV Sports. The volleyball team opens up against Lamar this Friday and finishes out against South Dakota Saturday at 7 p.m. We'll have updates on how the team finished on Monday's show. Alex Janikopoulos was out at the Iowa Recreational Center as he tries to master the art of rock climbing. Alex, show us what you got. The first floor of the rack contains many machines and weights that take time to learn how to use properly, and they may be daunting at first. However, the most intimidating workout has to be the rock climbing wall. At three stories, there is a lot to learn before you can climb on. I talked to David Patton, the assistant director of outdoor programming, on the process one goes through to learn how to climb the wall. There's not a lot of room for error when you're up there, so um, take a lesson, come back, do your safety check, and then we issue you an approval card and you can use the wall whenever we're open on your own. Seems easy enough, so I thought I'd try the wall myself. With the help of trained staff weighing me down and keeping me alive, I scaled the three-story rock wall to see how a beginner may fare. I climbed all the way here, and I couldn't anymore. Not only is rock climbing a terrifying workout, it's an exhausting one as well, draining energy from my legs and my arms. I think I need to schedule a couple more free practices with the rec staff. David told me that although the learning curve is steep, the more you come out and climb the wall, the better and higher you will climb, which for me is encouraging because I only got about 10 feet in the air. Reporting from the Recreation Center, Alec Giannakopoulos, Daily Iowan TV Sports. You know, Zag, as many times as I've been in the rec center, I have yet to conquer the wall. I'd say it's intimidating when you walk in there, that big tall thing. Definitely. Meet number one is in the books for the Iowa women's golf team. The Hawkeyes finished in a tie for sixth place place at the Red Raider Invitation in Lubbock, Texas. I was scored a 9.07 at the two-day event. Jessica Ip capped off the tournament with a 70 on the final round and the women's golf team is in Vail, Colorado in two weeks for the Golf Week Conference Challenge. Bradley, back to you at the desk. Well, thanks guys. That wraps up our morning edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out every day live at dailyiowan.com, 8.30 a.m. For Daily Iowan TV, I'm Bradley Martin. Have yourselves a great day, Iowa City, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning.